On this week's episode of the Artist Works Music Series... I think that just, um, yeah, what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring yourself back to the present. The, just the simple pleasure of hearing the sound, like that you have this magical ability with your guitar or whatever instrument you play. You know, in my case, guitar, this magical ability to just put the guitar in your hand, pick up a flat pick, and just go ding on an open string with a pick. Like, if you were a little kid and you'd never heard a guitar before, you would be fascinated. It would be like, what is that? All this and more on this episode of the Artist Works Music Series. As musicians, we all find ourselves sometimes stuck in a little bit of a rut. That can come from maybe playing the same music all the time, you get a little bit bored, or it might mean for you that you just can't get over a mistake you keep making or your skills just aren't advancing. So we wanted to explore this topic a little bit deeper uh, with some folks who know of uh, ways for all players of all levels to kind of work their way through a rut. And it can take on a lot of different forms. So that's why we're talking uh, to a couple of different artists. But today, I'm very pleased to be joined by our newest member of the Artist Works roster, Chris Critter Eldridge. Uh, And just because he's the latest doesn't mean he's any less knowledgeable about how players can find their way um, out of a rut uh, and into new advancement. Uh, Critter uh, has been educated at Oberlin and he uh, studied under Tony Rice and he is also the guitarist for the Punch Brothers. So I am quite happy to welcome you, uh, Critter, and thanks for joining me today and talking to me Um, about the advice or philosophies you might have for these players that are listening to us today on how they might be able to get out of a playing rut. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. I love, uh, I mean, we've all kind of been there as musicians um, and all of us who who do this, you know, professionally do this with our lives. We've we've spent a lot of time being stuck (laughs) And, and so much of it is just, you know, kind of how you push through it and, and kind of how you, keep reconnecting to your kind of love and interest for this thing that ultimately we're just all so lucky to have a relationship with in the first place. Well, as a musician, I find it comforting that you've ever been stuck. (laughs) I'm not not alone. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. No, we, we all have, I think there's sometimes there can be like a, uh, not a myth, but it's, but um, I don't know people who, it can be easy to put musicians on some sort of pedestal. Not that it's like got to be a. It's not necessarily a very elevated pedestal, but but it really it really should be sort of like you know the tabloids you know at the grocery store. The musicians, they're professional musicians. They're just like us. Yeah. You know, we kind of we we kind of deal with the the same same kinds of issues. Um, and it's it's just um, yeah. I you know just to kind of jump in there with it. I, because because, you know, you, you, you mentioned this topic to me and I really think that that one of the most important things, at least for me, in terms of, um, you know, getting through periods um, when I'm just kind of having a hard time not loving what I'm hearing uh, is just remembering the relationship with music, just remembering that music is this thing that I love and, and that, it, that it can kind of occupy that place in my life. I, I, I think that that for a lot of us, um, you know, we can come to a, a, a point where we feel, you know, we have to be achieving some sort of goal. You know, things, music can become very goal oriented. A lot of things in our in our life, in our society can become very goal oriented. And there's there's certainly nothing wrong with that. It's actually really good. And, and, and by kind of having clear goals and executing on them, that's that's one you know, time tested way to to get better. Um, But I I think that especially as adults, um, we can get so focused on the goal and whether we are meeting or achieving uh, the goal that we, you know, can start to doubt ourselves, start having thoughts like, I don't know, I don't think I'm really getting this. This is not getting better. And and then all of a sudden, this this beautiful thing um, that 
you know, ultimately, I hope we all love, which is music. Again, this I, I will keep coming back to this idea that it's like a gift to all of us. It's like this gift that we have in our lives that no one can take away from us. Like if you love music, like it's yours forever, you know, so so kind of continuing to reconnect with that, um, I, I think is is really good. And 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 remembering that that it's a hobby and it, it's something that we do because we love it and not because we have to always be getting better. I and think I like removing that. that pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I think removing that pressure from ourselves um, can be really liberating and can just kind of can, you know, it's like a wall or, or, or a gate or something like that. You know, I think just by having that pressure lifted there, the gate can kind of rise up and then you can kind of move forward again. And in, in which I think oftentimes uh, will happen really naturally. And this is true whether you're, you know, just starting out playing and you've been playing for like six weeks and you're like, well, I mean, probably the thing is, it, it doesn't happen so much when you when you're when you've only been playing for six weeks because everything is so new and everything is so <laughs> joyful and you just find these things. And it's like, wow, like I didn't realize you can. That's how you play a C chord. And if I can play a C and a G and a D, I can play like tens of thousands of songs in like every different style, like, whoa, you know, the, the, the vistas are pretty wide open early on, but, but it happens, you know, it can happen to, to rank beginners, uh, just as it can to, to the people who are, who've been further, um, along the path. Um, so I, so I think just coming back to that, 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 um, realization that music is this beautiful thing that, that you, you loved and, uh, and that by connecting with that, it, it can become a, a source of um, kind of curiosity and, and, and exploration Yeah. rather than something that you have to be achieving. I think I think that uh, achievement thing, uh, it can't it, it's great. It has its place um, in clear goals are wonderful, but I think it, it can become a little warped sometimes. Yeah. So you're helping us put it all in perspective. So being a being stuck in a rut so to speak or just being stuck m may possibly be a a frame of mind um but then so that's very helpful you know it kind of takes some of the pressure off um and maybe maybe practice isn't quite so onerous i remember i had a conversation with eric marienthal um similar to this uh where we were talking about how if if practicing is just drudgery for you, you're working too hard. Just to, just to back yeah. up a little bit and enjoy the music you're making. What do, do you think that's a way to maybe reconnect? You mentioned reconnecting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I, I think it always comes back. So for me, um, you know, there are all these different concepts that are kind of tied up in in what we're talking about. You can approach it from a bunch of different angles. I think and. Uh, you know, one might be motivation. You know, if we're talking about being in a rut, like what does that mean? Does it mean you're not getting better or that you, you're not motivated to like pick it up and work on it? Because um, ultimately, if you do really work on it with a curious mind, um, I, I do actually and, you you know, keep you push yourself. I do think you will expand. It's just our we're human beings. We all have you know, plastic, very plastic brains. It's that's a true thing about being humans. And this idea that, you know, you uh, if you don't start, you know, when you're in the womb, that you're not going to be able to, you know, do something. It's just not true. That's it's it's simply, um, you know, uh, neurology kind of tells us it's not true. Brains are plastic till the very ends of our lives. So we can always we can always get better if we push ourselves. But but um, this idea of. Um, finding motivation is 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 really important. And I think that you can often if if I'm in a rut where I'm not interested in playing. It's, you know, kind of trying to, you know, whip myself into into going, you know, trying trying to be like, man, you need to really that doesn't work so well. What, what works for me is trying to, um, like you said, and like Eric said, you know, take a step back. And and try and discover what you love about music, like have have like try and reconnect with your sense of curiosity about it, because okay. if you're curious and if you can invest in exploring your own curiosity, if you can invest, if you can be like a, a detective and try and get in there and figure out, um, you know, 
uh, why you like the things that you like. Well, first of all, what do you what do you really like? Like, let's not take it for granted. What are the things we like? You know, you can think about that. You can, you might then reflect like, well, why do I like that? What is the thing about that that I like? Like mm-hmm. this, that's kind of interesting. I must like it for some reason. And you kind of get in there. And I think um, through through um, encouraging your own curiosity, which I, those two things, those two little questions that I just asked. Uh, would be examples of kind of probing at your own curiosity, you know, like, you know, it's a curious mind that's asking the questions, but those answers give you a place to then further explore yourself, because what you love is going to be different than what the person, you know, next to you loves, which is going to be different than what the person next to them loves. You know, we all um, we all kind of have our um, interests you know, and, uh, you know, things we love, things we dislike. And those are going to be as unique to each of us as our fingerprints are. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. I think that's another important um, uh, piece here is, is and, and it kind of ties back to what I was saying a little while about uh, a little while ago about um, how music is 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 yours. It's this gift that you have that no one can take away from you. your own relationship with music is your own unique relationship with music. And so. If that's true, then you're going to have there are going to be things about music that you find interesting, whether you've thought about it in that way or not, that it's going to be true. And so the more you can kind of connect with with those things that you find interesting, I think the more um, effortless it is to then be motivated and explore them. It's, it's boring to explore something that you have no interest in. But if you can figure out what you're what you think is cool. Oh, it's just off to the races. It's like, yeah. you, know, the, you know, people can't keep you away from it at that point. So I think exploring that a little bit further, let's just say somebody is a little discouraged. Um, maybe their playing isn't progressing and they've lost their motivation. Maybe we're getting a bit of a double header there. What do you think they could do? I mean, a couple of things come to my mind, like if you can, given COVID, get to a live concert. Um buy a new CD? I mean, what, how can you sort of reconnect with the music you love to get more motivation? I think those are great suggestions. Yeah. I mean, going, going to see a show is there's kind of nothing better than that. Um, because you, you know, you, you get to see people do it. It's, it's probably pretty inspiring and, and you, you get to really connect with the social aspect of music, which is, that's one of the really neat things uh, that's one of the unique powers of music is that it can kind of entrain uh, a group of people together. There really is something social about it, whether it's just somebody, you know, beating on a drum and, and that's enough to get people to move their bodies together. Um, or think about Pete Seeger and and how, you know, he would sing a song that everybody could sing along to. There There is this amazing... Hmm. Um, there is this amazing thing about music that, that is inherently... Uh, social a lot of times i think so so i think just going to a concert in and of itself can be very inspiring um uh because it's something that you share with a lot of people and i think i think maybe um maybe we then kind of want to participate in it more yeah um or you can listen to yeah get a record you know ask ask your friends what their favorite record is and and you know listen to it set some set some time don't just put it on while you're making dinner like set some yeah. time aside and actually listen to it or, you know, a place that I actually like to really listen to music. I, I can't uh, as much now, uh, but like uh, is in the car. You know, I yeah. actually love I can really listen to an album in the car. I feel like that's a beautiful place to listen. But whatever it is, you know, listen to a record and really spend some time with it. Um, or even better yet here, this kind of combines the last two things. And this is. This is truly an amazing thing to do is listening to an album with other people. Listen to yeah. a record that um, that you love or that somebody, you know, loves like with them, you know, and I, I feel like every time I if I sit and listen to a record by myself and then listen to that same record with um, with other people, my experience of the music is wildly different. If, if you listen to a record with someone who loves it. Somehow that joy is commu- you don't have to say anything, but that joy is communicated. And also if there's like a painful experience of if you listen to a record with someone who's just like, ah, you're like <laughs> you can just tell they're just like, ah, I don't like, you know, you, you get that, too. 
ideally there's going to be a lot less of the latter, you know. Um, but 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 listening listening to music with other people, I find can be super duper inspiring. Well, in, in sure. Fact, um, yeah, you know, like um, you know, really different than doing it on your own. One of Punch Brothers um, had a residency, kind of a teaching residency at Oberlin, where I'm actually a professor now um, when I'm not artist working or playing music. <laughs> and um, but but um, in the in I guess it was from like 2013 to, you know, 2017 or so. We did, I think it was four years there. And and one of the, we'd, we'd go up once or twice a, a semester and hang out with the students and teach them and do master classes and all that. But the thing that we did consistently that always wound up being, I thought, one of the most interesting things was we would have these listening sessions where basically we, Punch, the guys in the band would kind of, um, sit and just kind of play a song we'd each each one of us would take a turn but but people would come you know there'd be like you know 30 people there and we'd just listen to these songs that we we really loved and we'd we'd play them for everybody we'd talk about why we loved them and it was so fun it was so fun and 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 just felt really um i don't know it, it I, I think i think people got a lot out of that a lot more out of that than you would think i think it went in terms of inspiration so you can't ever just underestimate going back to the well of music itself. Yeah. You know, I, that's, I, that's really it. I totally agree with that. And I think, you know, this communal aspect of music is very powerful because when you ask someone for a recommendation on even a TV show or a, a CD, they're, they're going to say, here's why I love it. And that automatically prejudices you to listen or watch for yeah. their point of view. and. So I find I find that really valuable advice and something I hadn't truly considered. So let's just put one more scenario um, on the board. And um, well, uh, what I was going to say is, what do you, what's your advice to people that are bored? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to, you well, know, uh, yeah. But I mean, let's just say somebody's they're bored with what they're playing. You know, they're 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 not too inspired. What what can what can they do? I mean, what's your advice to somebody who's just a little bored with what they're doing? Yeah, well, you know, I think bored. You know, uh, well, for you know, I think a lot of what I've been saying goes goes for that. But I, you know, if, if it's really specifically to if you're bored with yourself as a as a player, that's kind of the angle. Um, Should they listen to different kinds I of music, can, different genres, maybe? Or I don't know. What's your advice? Not mine. Yeah, you you. I mean, yeah, totally. I mean, I think I, I'm kind of of the school that, um, you know, there's good music and bad music. Um, so and there's like good mm-hmm. music and everything that we, uh, you know, I mean, genres do exist. Um, but I think most musicians tend to not be interested in the idea of genre because because we tend to relate to it in terms of like, I think that's awesome or not. So so to me. Uh, you know, Kendrick Lamar is is someone who I think is like a genius, but it might seem odd from some, you know, coming from me, someone who like makes his career ostensibly is like, I don't know if you call what I do actually bluegrass, but, you know, some sort of weird bluegrass musician. But he's he's brilliant. You know, I, I think you can find inspiration anywhere. And I, I think remembering to kind of keep your mind and ears open is is a is a really good thing to do. Um so yeah, I think that. But another thing, I think, I think kind of connecting, reconnecting to some fundamentals about your instrument can be really fun. Um, so what do I mean by that? Like, here, here's something that Tony Rice taught me that I thought was this was one of the really neat, profound lessons he he gave me. Um, he he was he shared with me about um uh from the great bill evans the mm-hmm. pian the jazz piano yeah. player and apparently bill evans said you should you should be content as a you know as a person having a music musical experience you should be content to play one note on the piano one single note and you can just play it boom and just let it go let it ring out but just be absorbed listen to everything that one note has to give there's so much there there are overtones like as it as it fades it, you know you'll hear the dynamic of it changing 
you'll hear different overtones emerge as it gets quieter. You might hear some like higher up things that on that one note that you didn't really hear before. It's very fascinating. And and I've actually had good luck um, with that with myself when I've kind of been bored. It's just like playing an open string on the guitar. Like if I'm just so sick of hearing what I'm, you know, all my bag of tricks or whatever, just playing the instrument and just playing, you know, an open string and just really connecting to and loving that sound um, and following it all the way until it dies um, down to silence. That. That's a real. That's like going back to a well in a certain. In yeah, a certain it's way. very because zen. What it does very zen. Is it what's, yeah. Well, what it does is it is it teaches you, um, kind of the the beauty of of kind of the sound that you, you're creating at any given moment. Like if that sound is beautiful and fascinating, which it is, it always is to me anyway. Um, imagine when you can play, you can put three notes together. Imagine how beautiful that can be. Um, and kind of, kind of switching your perspective, switching your headspace on that, um, I've found to be, I think it's very powerful and I think it's very doable. I mean, it, it is kind of Zen and it does kind of require a certain kind of, um, willingness to go there, but, but, but it's, um, it's there for you. I mean, I would, I would encourage anybody to try that. Hmm. Um, just, just do the thing where you, you play a note and just like let it sustain, let it go the whole way and really hear everything. Take in all the data you can about that note. Like, you know, imagine, imagine. Yeah. Think of it even from that perspective. Like, OK, here's the volume changing I Hear these overtones. Here's like here's maybe even the way that I hear it bouncing around the room or maybe here. I Maybe I play that note and I actually. Oh, wow. I like feel the, the guitar like kind of resonating slightly against the underside of my arm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much from that experience uh, that could be really interesting if you kind of just take the time to remember to be present and listen to it. Yeah. And, and once you've got that, that head on, once you've got that kind of that sense of mindfulness on, it's like, how could you be bored with anything that you're doing? Like how, how could yeah. you almost can't <laughs> be bored, you know? No. Um, which is, um, I, I mean, I hope I hope that resonates with people. But for me, that's really, really true, um, because then if then you can play two notes and it can just be you don't have to be up to your old tricks. You can you can reduce it down to something that's a lot more fundamental, a lot more basic. But you're kind of primed to hear the beauty in what you're doing. And so you might, you know, have a fiddle tune. You know, that's how the tune could go. But you could try taking a solo and go one, two, three, four. There you go. That's an A part of Billion the Low Ground right there, improvised, using very few notes. And and to me, I don't know if that made sense to anybody else, but I, I, I was kind of into it. I was like, I haven't really heard it like that before. Yeah. There's no hot licks involved. It was just kind of like, oh, that, could, that could be but interesting. But I think you're really getting to the essence of some of these issues where people can, the reasons people maybe get stuck, because it's so easy as a musician to get, to, to get um, focused too much on how many notes can I play? How fast can I play them? And, you know, how do, how yeah. do I improvise, whether you're a jazz player or whether you're playing bluegrass? It, it doesn't matter. I mean, we really can get a little distracted by all of these, you know, bells and whistles, so to speak. And I, I love that you've brought it down to a musical mantra. And, and that's just yeah. listening to something singular almost. And oh, I'm going to say something weird, but kind of becoming that note. Just because yeah, sure. you're, you're accepting everything that you're experiencing, whether it's, you know, kind of a visual thing or an aural thing. I find, you know, that is very simple advice that any player of any music can do. And you're, you're, I don't want to talk too much here, but you're just kind of really getting down to the very core of what music is. And it is that sound and the quality of that sound. And if you're bored, 
now after you do that, you at least have, you know, a renewed connection to the very purest sound that you make. That's, that's really, really yeah. great advice. Oh, good. I like it. I like it a lot, <laughs> you. you know, that's, and it's something I haven't heard before. I, no one has ever mentioned something that simple. So I guess we can say Tony, Tony Rice's um, legendary philosophy lives on through you. Oh, well, you know, Tony, here's the thing. Tony was so wise. He was a really wise, deep guy. And um, yeah, and all my time that I that I spent with him, um, you know, which wasn't tons and tons of time, but I knew him my whole life. And he kind of really took me on. He took me under his wing, like as his protege at a certain point. And um, and and we just hung out and talked. It was all, you know, he wasn't interested in showing me uh, how to how to play, you know, his version of Gold Rush note for note. He knew if I wanted to figure that out, I'd figure it out. But we, he, he was kind of much more concerned, much more interested in some of these kind of big picture um, things. And I think that's part of why he was so great. He was, he was like this kind of weird spiritual guru. And I don't think, I don't think he necessarily would have realized it by listening. I, I mean, you, you couldn't realize it by listening to his music. But you also kind of think of Tony as this like machine gun, rapid fire, like amazing technician on the guitar. But he was a really um, deep thinker, really wise. Yeah, so I, I think then it sounds like in the, the philosophies of Tony Rice have been passed on through you, where he looks at music in almost its simplest form so that you can appreciate the grandness of it when you become an accomplished player like you. Well, he, you know, I think, I think the beauty of it is that it, it, it's, it's not just for people who are, you know, quote unquote, accomplished it's it's kind of there for for anybody mm -hmm. you know you can i feel like anybody can can make really profound um music if if like well there's no if there's really no if about it uh, the the statement is anybody can make really profound music it's like if you believe it and you're kind of right there in it you can make something and and you're again not to go too much in this woo woo direction but if like your heart is true about it it can be really compelling. A, a beginner, and I've had this experience where where people people who um, are really kind of have only been playing for a very short amount of time and would be maybe considered beginners, make, making really profoundly beautiful music. I've absolutely heard that happen. Um, and and so yeah, I think I think where we get into trouble is if if we get super um, achievement oriented and you feel like i'm only good if i can do x y and z and that's just not true uh, you know if if you want to do x y and z that's great and you should work on doing x y and z like that's awesome and and go ahead and fill it in with you know t you know w um you know just fill in the rest of them it's great um but but there's no um, there's no prerequisite. There are no there are no boxes that you actually have to yeah. check. Um, you know there are widely accepted um, values that I think make it easy to have a musical communication with someone else. Like 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 playing in time is a really important thing if you're going to be playing bluegrass, for instance. That that is a little you know that's as close to a prerequisite as I'd say there is because if everybody kind of can't play on the same beat and feel that same sense of flow then it's it's hard to kind of have that real-time communication um and collaboration of bringing sound or bringing music to life with your fellow musicians like that that's something that we we, we want to work on but but i also um think this idea of you know to improvise you have to know all your scales and modes and be able to play them in you know, retrograde and like in this pattern, like that stuff is awesome. And I, you know, I teach some of that stuff in my class uh, here at Artist Works for sure because it can be valuable. But it's not a prerequisite. It's not a prerequisite. Um, and so I think I think just remembering that um, and kind of realizing that you are, can already kind of do it. Yeah, it's, it's already there for you. Is is really yeah. Cool. Well, so far you've given us some some pretty 
valuable insight here. So let's do a little bit of a recap and correct me if I've gotten some of this wrong. So I think the first thing that you said is, um, you know, remember kind of the role that music plays in your life and don't get too focused on what you just said, the goal and achieving, because then you start to doubt yourself. You know, you don't have to always be getting better. So kind of remember. You don't have to always. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. The, the you know, like working on stuff is great, and I, I don't want to make I don't want to make it sound as if I, I am against that because I'm I'm not at all. I'm, I mean, I'm all for it 100. percent But I, I just yeah I want to dispel the myth that it's it's like a prerequisite, and because I think that's where people get yeah. stuck. You know, if yep. the if the theme of this conversation is a, is a rut, you know, what do you, is that that I think is one of the prime sources of a, of a rut is you feel like I'm not doing this well enough and you get stymied in that place and you know, I'm still not doing it well enough. And then you just kind of give up. Yeah. And that's what I would want people to not do. Right. Well, that's, it's good advice given the context of the conversation. So I think it's, it's very valuable. And then um, you also said uh, to reconnect with um, what makes music interesting to you, right? Yeah. 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 So, so whatever, you know, again, we all are going to have our own, um, things that we love records that meant a lot to us when we were growing up and, and, you know, there, it's going to be a unique fingerprint that, that, um, it, what we love is, is a part of our identity and, and why we love the things we love is also a part of our, our identity. So I think we can investigate that. That's a, that's a, that's a worthwhile um, uh, point of investment is kind of going into that, like asking yourself, why do I love these things? Um, because then if you start, if you have a few questions, questions that are answered, uh, in terms of why do I love, I love that because I, I love, you know, hearing colorful chords. I love hearing chord voicings that have like neat colors in them. Um, then great. Then you've got, you've got, uh, you've got some marching orders for yourself. Like, great. Start working on that. Play, <laughs> play with those things, um, you know, and and, um, you know, it's funny it, doing something like we, we do here at Artist Works. Like there, we have curriculums and we want people to go through the curriculums. And that's really good, too. The curriculum is good. Um, but also um, that's not the only way, you know, you can always kind of you can always you know, step aside or like put extra emphasis on the thing that you want. And it's, it's all a survey in my opinion. Um, but, but if, you know, if you, if you're questioning what you, what you are interested in, it can just lead you, it can just allow you, it can empower Mm -hmm. you. Let's say it that way. It can empower you to start teaching, um, yourself in certain ways. And then, and then, you know, the fun thing, the thing I'm actually super psyched about the artist works. Then, then you have like guidance. You know, you can like get some guidance yeah. on that. You know, with a video exchange kind of thing. But like, um, yeah. I, so I think that's really okay. important. I think connecting with what you dig, what what you're into. I think that's a big and, one. I think that's really good. okay. Good. So that's number two on the list. And number three was um, have a curious mind. Yeah, push yourself, challenge mm-hmm. yourself a little bit. Any final thoughts on on number three on our list? Oh, I don't know. It's, you know, more of the same. It's all, they're all kind of like pointing at the same idea. I think, idea you know, from, from, from a I think to encourage people to be curious is, you know, this is just my you know, two cents on it is to investigate other genres, yeah. listen to other players that you haven't been listening to your whole life and just different variations on, on tunes maybe that you like. So um, that's. Yeah. Well, well, and, and, and I would say, you know, to, to add on to that is that whole idea um, of, um, experiencing music with with other people because I think I think that can be really illuminating as well. Like if you're if you're gonna go check out some other genres or, or something else, like listen to it with someone who who loves it. They can almost be a tour guide, um, whether they say a word or not. But if you, I, I don't know. I mean, I've I've gone on one vacation in my life, like to a fancy or not fancy, but you know, it was like traveling in the world and. And we got a, we hired a tour guide. And I, up until that point, I was always like, man, that just seems so cheesy. Like, I don't <laughs> want to, you know, get a tour guide. Like, the, the, I want to discover it all on my own. 
I have to say, the tour guide was incredible. <laughs> the tour guide just kind of like took us on a great tour, showed us things and pointed out things about, you know, whatever it was. It was interesting. And uh, it was I was my mind was changed. So I think I think listening to um, some music with your friends that they love that you maybe don't know anything right. about. Uh, it can be really valuable. It's they can let them be your. Tour yeah. Guide. And that that is really the fourth point that we had, too. And that is the motivation. And don't be afraid to go to, to um, a live concert or listen to an album with, with someone else and, and have a conversation about it. And then the final point was, you know, if you're bored, um, keep your ears open. Uh, and I thought that your philosophy or your idea about listening to one simple note or a few simple notes um, and absorbing what's happening acoustically um, can help motivate people and get them out of their boredom. Boredom. Is there any other thoughts on that final point? You know, I think I think that just um, yeah, what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring yourself back to the present. The, just the simple pleasure of hearing the sound, like that you have this magical ability with your guitar or whatever instrument you play. Um, you know, in my case, guitar, this magical ability to just put the guitar in your hand, pick up a flat pick and just go ding <laughs> on an open string with a pick. And what an amazing like if you were a little kid and you'd never heard a guitar before, you would be fascinated. You would yep. be like, what is that? That's a, that's crazy. And, and so just connecting, remembering to connect back to that experience I think can can kind of infuse uh, all of our experiences of playing with with some of that wonder that we we may have had um, before and we can still have but but maybe gets covered up sometimes by by feeling um, you know like I need to be able to do this and I can't do that oh gosh I suck like I, you know all the crazy you know kind of negative stuff that we cover we, we kind of cover these things up with and and it becomes less in, enjoyable or it feels like I have to, yeah, I keep going back to this idea, that, you know, because I think it's so common. I've just seen it so much where, where people think I have to be able to do this to be good. Like I have to right. be able to do this thing. And maybe you're not actually that interested in doing it, but you just like see the example of someone else who you admire and they can do it. So you're like, well, they're good and they do it. So I can't do it. So I must not be good or, or you know, it's it's this sort of that sort of thinking. I just I. uh you know, I mean, that's an overly simplistic example, but I, I do think that, that that kind of thinking is is really prevalent. Um, and I think that's what often leads people, uh, even if you're a hobbyist, even if you're not trying to be a professional musician, you can we can still fall into that sort of rut. And, and that can kind of lead us into losing motivation or losing interest. And, and uh, so it's just it's just all about connecting back. It's all about using your ears. Um, connecting back to, to the sound and the joy of it. Well, I knew you would have very valuable insights for us and a unique perspective. And um, once again, just want to thank Chris Critter Eldridge for joining me today and sharing his advice on how players can uh, get out of a rut or out of a slump that they might be in. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah, oh, my pleasure. It's great talking to you. Great. Thank you for suggesting this topic. So if you're interested in seeing any of the lessons that Critter has recorded for us here at Artistworks on bluegrass guitar, you can simply go to artistworks.com forward slash free lessons. Thank you, Chris.